Ladies and gentlemen, I am Sid Alpha. Now, I know I've said in the past that I enjoy story-driven games much more than I do any other genre, and for the most part, that's true. Games like Dragon Age, Mass Effect, the Baldur's Gate series, and so many others like those are straight up in my wheelhouse. Give me a choose-your-own-adventure and pack it with magic, technology, explosions, and testosterone-filled mayhem where the weight of the world is placed squarely on the shoulders of your character and do it all through a meaningful and well-written story, and I'm a happy man. Take some of those elements out, and I usually kick and scream. Such is the case with Earth Defense Force, a game that, for all intents and purposes, should suck by half of the metrics that I use to judge video games. It has poor graphics, laughable physics effects, horrendous controls, random frame rate drops, a laughable attempt at a story, and is all around seemingly uninteresting. At face value, it sounds like a horrible excuse for a video game that should be burned faster than a plague corpse during the 1400s. But I have to admit that after a while, I ended up having fun. I, I, I think I might have been, I, I think I might even start to like the game a little bit. I don't, I don't know why. I, it fails on so many different fronts, but yet I've been having a blast with it. Now I have two theories as to why I find it so fun, and yes, one theory does include subliminal messaging, as that's the only reason that could explain the madness that's taken hold of me. But before we go into the hows and the whys, let's take a quick look at the options menu. All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is actually take four on the options menu here. The reason being is the game is actually managing to crash my recording software. And uh, I actually found the reason why. So we're going to run through this here. Now, bear in mind, I went back into this and reloaded because my I found out my recording had gotten cut halfway through. And uh, so I found out why. And when I went back in to re-record, I saw that these settings had been uh, reset to their default. So the game does not retain these settings between loads. So we have the sound effects volume, BGM, voice, screen shake on or off, rotation speed, look up or down, inverted or normal. I had this set to inverted before I started recording again. Look left or right, vibration, camera effects, cut scene, skip cutscenes on or off, display steam IDs on or off. HUD size, small, medium, or default. Then we have the system settings. We have anti-aliasing on or off, which turning the anti-aliasing on or off actually managed to break my third, my external recording software, which just boggles my mind. We have shadow on or off, anisotropic filter, zero egg off, all the way up through 16x. Uh, again, there's no way of knowing what form of anti-aliasing this game is using. It doesn't tell you. We have display settings. We have the full screen on or off, which does you fat lot of fuck all nothing. I tried multiple times to turn full screen on, and the game basically told me to get wrecked. Uh, it does nothing. It leaves you in windowed mode. We have letterbox on or off and then resolution. It does go up to 4K resolution all the way to, down to 640 by 480. So all in all, very basic bare bones options menus, and uh, which is something to which I'm fairly expectant of when it comes to a PlayStation port like this. Uh, we're going to go into class and equipment real quick while we're here just so you guys can see the different classes a little bit easier. This is, of course, the Ranger. He's your standard infantry type. He does have a rocket launcher and an assault rifle. He's the most well-rounded and the, probably the easiest class to play with. Uh, he's also the one that I had the most fun with. Uh, decently maneuverable, good reload rates, all of that. Uh, the Wing Diver, uh, they're jetpack equipped, and they're basically the light, fat, light and fast guy. Uh, the Air Raider, he's basically your tech specialist with all sorts of heavy weapons and nastiness. And then we have the Fencer, which is just straight up nasty bruiser brawler type. Uh, it's featuring heavy weapons and heavy armor. This guy is slow and packs and carries a big stick. Um, aside from that, we do have some weapon customizations, which you will need to do in through the course of the game. Uh, you pick up different uh, weapon types as you go through, and different missions require different, uh, different objectives, and you'll need to customize a little bit to be able to make things either easier or more difficult on yourself. And then we have, the, of course, the adjust armor value, which... Uh, 
you do have uh, min or max armor value, which you can p uh, pick up and uh, get more armor as things go along. Very small, slight improvements on your overall health there. Uh, other than that, there's not much to do for customization, although you can kind of choose different colors and everything for your primaries primary and secondary colors so a slight very very slight amount of customization there again very much what you would expect from a PlayStation 3 port and here it is in all of its horrendous splendor Earth Defense Force 4.1 the shadow of new despair and yes this game's title is about as long-winded as the gameplay itself now before we get into things it's worth noting that somehow these Earth Defense Force games seem to have a fairly large following of which I am not a member of I've never played any of the previous titles, nor do I expect to do so, so please take that into consideration. I am no fanboy, and I don't expect to become an EDF disciple. What I can do, though, is tell you about the game itself. It sucks. There's no way around it. Looking at the mechanics of the game, it fails on nearly every level. However, like one of those B-movies that are pure horrendousness with campy lines, cheesy plot, and shallow characters... Yeah, baby! The graphics are dated. The port is riddled with flaws, including poor optimization, frame rate drops, horrendous keyboard and mouse support, lame samey horde mode levels, and way too much screaming, broken multiplayer, and if you have an AMD processor, then forget about it. You most likely won't even be able to play it if you have an AMD. So you'd think that would be the end of it, but no. It has some good things going for it too, and strangely enough, a lot of them are the same ones I've already listed. Pure horrendousness with campy lines, cheesy plots, shallow characters, and samey horde mode gameplay. This game has some odd mixture of badness that has actually somehow created an enjoyable game. Now you play as a member of the EDF, fighting against an alien invasion who are using a variety of giant insects as shock troops, and follow them up with giant city killer mechs that have the capability of sla straight up slaughtering you with barely a moment's notice. The game's campaign mode starts you off with missions so easy that they're actually exceptionally boring. I almost put the game away after the first six or seven missions as they were just dull and bland with nothing to offer by the way of interesting gameplay. But for the purposes of pushing through to offer a decent review for you guys, I stuck with it and I'm glad I did. The first mission I encountered with Alien Flyers, I actually found myself immediately getting into it as the game somehow captured the craziness and overwhelming feeling of combat that left me almost unbelieving that it was actually over when the last enemy fell from the sky. It was pure chaotic insanity and I found myself loving every second of it. Now, the game took a sharp upturn in difficulty after that until it reached Dark Souls level of difficulty, leaving me in an area where I was getting slaughtered over and over and over again by giant robots without mercy, forcing me to start the level over from the beginning. Now that is one of the drawbacks of older style video games like this as I began to lose interest in the single player campaign due to that. But I do plan on going back and trying it out with different character types as I do feel some form of inexplicable burning need to beat that level. It made me feel invested in figuring out how to beat it, and that is something that very few video games are capable of doing these days, hence why I think there may be some form of subliminal messaging going on. Now, featuring four classes, the Ranger, Air Raider, Wing Diver, and the Mighty Fencer, the game allows a wide variety of different playstyles and even some limited customization with those classes by way of primary and secondary weapon options. However, it's also worth noting that the game doesn't care about your choices or playstyle, and some missions are simply easier with some classes than others. Now, the controls are wonky and somewhat difficult to use, but it does get a little easier using a controller than with a keyboard and mouse, which is a shame, as this game could definitely benefit from the fine control that the keyboard and mouse provide. Now, the graphics of the game denote either a very late PS2 or very early PS3 release and was very clearly ported from that system. They are extremely dated, and it appears the developers did little to update the graphics for more modern systems, which is a shame, as a bit more polish on the game would make it much, much more appealing. As it stands outside of the fan base, I am expecting to see very little draw to the game. However, the 60fps when the game can maintain it is a welcome addition and helps to offset the age of the game. Also, it's worth noting that the physics of the game are completely and utterly broken. Your run-of-the-mill assault rifle launches the bugs across the battlefield like they're, well, bugs. But you can barely move them at all with your character. 
Now, I know there has to be a certain suspension of disbelief in games like this, but simple mathematical physics is something that is fairly big for me in games like these. For every action, there is an equal and opposite reaction, and being able to launch a bug the size of a three-story building across the map with a few bullets from your pea shooter is something that's just not okay with me. The story is delivered via in-game dialogue, and it's about as basic as you can imagine, only serving as a backdrop to offer a veneer of purpose to why you're battling giant bugs. Aliens vade for reasons unknown, and you are fighting for the survival of the human race. Now go slaughter your giant insects and robots. We got it. And for a great deal of people, this seems to be enough. It's not for me, but I have fairly exacting standards when it comes to story. It's important to me. However, I do know that the game can be appreciated without it. Featuring single-player, split-screen co-op, and online cooperative multiplayer, this game offers a metric ton of content for those that are able to stay engaged, which is somewhat hard to do, as multiplayer is even buggier than the single-player campaign missions. But if you're able to get past the glitches and be a little forgiving, then you can and will enjoy yourself. However, for the purposes of review, I can't be forgiving, even for a game that I happen to enjoy. I would rate this game a 3 out of 10 by virtue of its graphics, control issues, glitches, multiplayer problems, and the fact that it's completely broken for AMD processors. However, however, the campy fun and titanic volumes of content cannot be denied. Even in spite of its shoddy and lame implementation, it's still fun. And surprisingly, I still feel good having paid $35 for it, because I do plan on going back, and I'll be playing a lot of it. Uh, hopefully the multiplayer will get better, because that's where I see the real draw for this game, is the cooperative multiplayer. But take it for what it is, and uh, please make your own decisions. It's also obvious to me that this game is not for everyone. And I would urge you to exercise caution before purchasing. The game's full price is $50, bear in mind. And by no means would I consider that an acceptable price tag under any circumstances considering what's being offered here. So this has been Earth Defense Force 4.1 The Shadow of New Despair a horde mode cooperative third-person shooter by Sandlot. It's available on Steam now for $50 or your original equivalent. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. My channel only grows at your bidding, so please do help it along the way. Once again, I am Sid Alpha, and I will see you next time. Hi there, boys and girls. Thanks for checking my video out. If you liked what you saw, don't forget to hit that like button and maybe even that subscribe button. Trust me, it works really good. Don't forget to share with your friends. And if you're interested in following me on Twitter and Facebook, the links for that are in the description down below. I also have a Patreon if you're interested in helping to support the growth of my channel. And the link for that is down below as well. And once again, thanks for watching and supporting my channel, guys. I really appreciate it.